So this is Ludi Gugu. You have to watch this. You simply must. Hello, beautifuls. Welcome back to my Chanel. And welcome to another episode of Unhinged Beauty TikTok, my lovelies. What are we going to see today? Well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. If you are new here, my name is Luxaria. I have been a makeup artist for 17 years. Ugh. And I also have a biochemistry degree because I have a fundamental interest in the way things work. This is the series here on the Chanel where I put my knowledge in these two areas to the test and see whether the fact or fiction shared over on TikTok beauty, beauty talk if you like, is actually worth its weight in gold or not. <sighs> Oh, that's marvellous. Or is it feces? You may have noticed I have in fact just redone my hair, but unfortunately I did it really, really late last night and I sort of panicked when I put my toner on and thinking it was getting too dark and it's actually like banana yellow, so that's fun. I was also testing out a new concealer today and that went absolutely awfully. So I don't know who she thinks she is giving advice on the internet. Ugh. Well, my lovelies, if you want to follow me over on TikTok, it is XXLuxaria. Tag me in any absolute abject horror you see in the beauty world and you never know, it might be featured in the next edition of Unhinged Beauty TikToks. Well, my lovelies, grab yourself a beverage, make sure you're sitting comfortably, pop your little ochenger right into your TikTok hole, and let's dive in, shall we? What is this? Volume 20, 19, 18, 17, 16? One of these. Time for a brow lift. All right, so first up, we have Easy Tight Lining Technique by Makeup by Katie Angelidi, I believe. Right, let's have a little watchy plop. Why isn't it working? Oh, TikTok. <laughs> One of the best tricks I was ever taught in my makeup career was by Laura Mercier. Herself. Oh, I'm and wearing that is powder today. The art of tight lining. Art. I see tight lining being bandied about incorrectly, incorrectly when people line the inner waterline of their eye. That's right. not tight lining. That has a place. Tight lining is when you get the liner in between the lashes. And what does that do? That fills in that little gap that you can sometimes get between your eyeliner and the root of your lashes. Yes. It's also really hard sometimes to get your mascara really deep into the root of your lashes without yeah, getting generally, I'm going to show you an easy way to tie really line advised. that's not fiddly and with a brush. Right, here we it's go. just using a pencil like this, Lovely reasonably pencil. sharpened. We are going to tilt the head... Sharpen your pencils, my lovelies. My goodness, the amount of times I see people literally like shoving wooden shards into their eyes because it's not sharp. God, how awful! I'm going to press my eye. Press your eye. Have a little hallucinate. When you Treat press yourself. your eyelid... Interesting. It allows you to get into the root of the lashes whilst keeping the eyeball covered. The minute you do this, Ooh, uh, no. all the air will into, into your eye nerve. and it feels horrible. Mm -hmm. So chin back, you're going to look down, you're do being you my mirror. Really Press the lid. Hold that pencil Press sideways. Press nails. We're going to go like so. Mm. I will say though, this pencil looks, looks particularly look. creamy, so like it might not eye. hang around hasn't been filled in. I'm getting into the lashes. Just kind of going back and making sure that I've got every part. Do you know, covered. I love watching people actually when spend time. When you look straight time. ahead, can you see the difference? Yes. It's so subtle, but that lash line has become intensified. Now you could, if you wanted to, start going in and filling in on oh, the Oh, treat yourself if you want to. So. I'll show you in another video. Oh, I hope that helps. Okay, well, that wasn't quite where I expected it to go, but nice. you know what? Great. So let's dive into it, shall we, my lovelies? I always say that I basically paint like a showgirl with a day job. I need my liners to last under studio lighting. I need it to last for hours and hours and hours whilst filming, gas bagging around or popping to the local supermarket for some eggs. Tight lining and upper waterline lining are gonna be key to maintaining that really crisp, finished eye look. So while I agree with Katie here that you can use a pencil to sort of dot in between the lashes to really get that going, if you're going to be using a waterproof gel liner or a waterproof eyeliner full stop, what I like to do is just hold my eye like this and let the eyeliner slightly set without blinking or moving, usually about 10 or 15 seconds. And I find that that really, 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 really disguises the line between your natural lashes, your eyeliner and your falsies if you are wearing them. But yes, make up a Katie. Oh, Laura Mercier, the woman who couldn't. <laughs> but in fact, she could. It's not really necessary. Right, what do we have next? Oh, here we go. Oh, seven seconds. Treat yourself. Get dressed with me to go clubbing in my 30s. Oh, been there, my lovelies. Right, we've got... Oh, oh no. Copyright lady. Put it on the floor. Put it on the floor. Ah! Go to bed. Yes, honestly, cannot agree 
more than that. There's something about being your mid 30s, should we say. I don't know if everyone else is experiencing this, but I'm definitely experiencing this. I'm sober now. I've been on a sober journey for nearly two years. Can you believe it? Nearly two years, completely sober, amazing. My interest in being in loud, noisy, drunk environments with music that I don't particularly like or haven't particularly listened to outside of social media like TikTok or Instagram. I'm just not enjoying it. I don't like it, no. I don't mind the idea of like going to a bar and having like a couple of mocktails, maybe on the beach on Shafter, maybe on holiday. But the idea of stepping into a like young nightclub right now, like the hip coolest place to be that isn't like club kid gothic fashion, sounds like the worst idea to me. And this is where I'm going to alienate my younger audience. Although apparently, <laughs> Gen Z and now like older Gen Alpha. How old are Gen Alpha now? How old's the oldest? Are they being naughty yet? <laughs> I started my clubbing adventures in life at 16 years old. In fact, I actually think it might have been just before 16, which is highly illegal, don't do it, no naughty. So by the time I turned 18 in the UK and could drink and go clubbing, I kind of already done it. I was a bit like, hmm. And then I found my groove in the nightclub scene that I really liked, which was the alternative nightclub scene. And also actually heavily into the LGBT nightlife scene. Loved that, worked in the nightlife for a while, loved it. This is gonna be a bit of a nostalgia rant from me, but I feel like these little, what are they called? Like bastions of alternative beauty and sharing and knowledge just don't exist anymore. Now that everything has been reduced to a trend, all I seem to hear when I'm like nearby to these clubs is like TikTok remixes of songs that are literally like a minute long. It's not for me, girly wigs, so I agree. What I would rather be doing at 35 years old is going to bed. <laughs> so long, farewell, I'll be just saying goodnight. Oh, maybe playing some Final Fantasy 13 too at the moment. Oh. The next one, my lovely, is by Fro Artistry, and they say makeup hack three. Oh, what's she gonna do with those? She yeah, pegs him, I'm that. sorry. <laughs> Take your fingers, okay? So Take your fingers right and here, shove them. And you're gonna place it right there. Contour right, right here. Uh -huh. The middle one, we are going to use our blush. And the last finger here is where the highlight goes. Just like that. Start blending these all upwards. Oh, she's struggling to blend that. I don't think, I would not agree with this. No, oh, did she rub it off and start again? This is genius. I'm really sorry, I don't agree. So first of all, this kind of a placement might be ideal if you're just kind of starting out and you need to get a good idea of where to put things. It's actually better to think of your cheek as a V like this. Hang on, let me, my eyelashes are so big, I simply can't. This is your cheek. Well, this is my cheek, but it's for the purpose of this video, it's your cheek. Everything on your cheek should go in between these two lines. So if you imagine a triangle from the edge of your eye to the edge of the lip, to the top of where your ear touches um, your skull. <laughs> What's this bit called? Oh my God, she's got a degree. That's kind of where all your blush, highlight, bronzer and contour should go. However, that's not gonna work for absolutely everyone. That is a guideline, a very basic guideline. Now, if we're looking straight ahead, Contour doesn't actually come onto your face unless you have very prominent cheekbones that go outwards rather than upwards and outwards. So actually for the majority of people, contour, blush and highlighter and bronzer will go on the outer third of your face. If you think of your face in thirds, so you've got one third in the front and a third like this. All of your contouring where light catches, you wanna go on the outside of your face. I personally believe that pulling them in where these three fingers are Hang on, what did she do? She did like this. It's too far in, it's too far in. If you're putting things here, you're gonna make your face look very gaunt without actually achieving like a contour or a, for the majority of cases, flattering look. And then of course, it depends what kind of decade of makeup you like. I'm very, very, very into high cheekbones of the late 90s. So I do all of my contour right up to the edge of my eye. And I don't really bring it in further because I actually find that it makes my face a little bit too rounded and I prefer the angular. Do you want to say though, each to their own, each to their own. There's no wrong way of doing makeup, but there are ways that you can make it more flattering for your face shape. Thank you. Right, what's the next lady up to? <laughs>
This one is by Natalie O'Neill. These are four of the best beauty hacks I've learned off the internet as someone who's nearly 30 volume. and wants to share it with my early 20s girls. Nearly the first 30. one is using just for men when you want to tint your eyebrows. Now that I'm nearly 30, I can't really be asked to do that very often. Yes. But when I was in my early 20s and I had the time, energy and the will, yes. it was a hell of a lot cheaper than a lot of the things that are offered to us women specifically. The yes. second beauty hack that everybody absolutely has to know is if you get red flaky patches around your nostrils here and here, that is a sign of seborrheic dermatitis, aka dandruff going on in your face. Yes. The easiest thing you can do for it is buy something for athlete's foot or dandruff. Nice because that is dandruff, dandruff athlete's foot, fungal, is, it's the same thing. Shush. That, this by the way, this, this shampoo-y situation, this, this Nizoral anti-dandruff shampoo is absolutely incredible if you have any persistent like fungal nonsense that's going on on your skin it is so good i completely agree this anti-dandruff situation incredible she's a woman that is dandruff athlete's foot fungal it's the same thing everyone has a level of fungal going on in their face but they sometimes do. we have a bit too much of it or Especially we if you're a bit react run down. to the stuff that we have i'll put some details on which products you can try out in the caption the third one blows my mind because I see so many people on TikTok use a lighter to heat up their eyelash colours when there is something far less risky and far more effective that is free. Okay, maybe not 100% free, but you can put it on your radiator instead. And I even saw someone on the internet say you can put it in your bra while you're getting ready to heat it up more gently than a lighter would. You can also just use a hairdryer. The possibilities are really endless and you're going to get a much deeper and longer lasting curl on your eyelashes. And the last one is one that took me years. But I'm not personally a huge fan of heating up eyelashes. Oh, thank God. I'm not personally a huge fan of heating up eyelash curlers because I have found that it makes it a little bit easier to like rip, rip bits out. A good quality lash curler does go a long way. I personally use the Dior one. I really like it. it makes you feel a bit bougie. Got to, haven't you? Got to get joy somewhere in life. It looks particularly great and it's in fact not a lot more than other high street brands' is eyelash curlers. Mm -hmm. A lot of the issue with eyelash curling is the technique rather than the type of lash curler that you are using. If you find you have really small eyes and you just want to like make the outer edge a little bit more curled, you can actually get a half lash curler and it makes all the difference, all the difference for creating that little bit more lift in your lashes. A waterproof mascara is also going to infinitely help your lashes hold a curl. Now, one of my little techniques that I like to do, I cannot remember where I learned this. I think it was in a vintage makeup tutorial years ago is when you are curling your lashes start from the end not the base start from the end one two three four move in slightly one two three four move in slightly again one two three four and that will actually give you a bit more of a long lasting curl than starting at the base and moving out and up and out and up because you're actually making sure that the curl in the edge of the eyelash is going to stay the more you know girly wigs right what's well, i tried one? it and that is using conditioner as shaving cream on your legs that definitely yeah. works that's all i have to say yeah I would agree with that. Yeah, you can use a hair conditioner. It's full of silicones to give it that slip. So anything that helps the razor glide over the skin without giving any irritation is a good one. I'm gonna add a few on here. I think a good skincare routine is so important for early 20s, especially if you are an avid makeup wearer. Make sure you take your makeup off cleanly every time you wear it. So that's a double cleanse, something a little bit oil-based and then something a little bit foamy. And then to finish off, either a salicylic acid or a retinol-based treatment once every few days and you will have just gorgeous glowing skin. You can also use a little bit of niacinamide as well if you need brightening for the skin. Just make sure you wear your SPF. Yes, yes. Right, what do we have here? The best liner hack. Okay, are you ready? Can't wait to learn more about eyeliner. I'm drawing mine here. And we're gonna put it into the corner uh, well. of the eye and we're just gonna pull it out. Oh. I mean, sure, it feels a little bit unnecessary in my opinion. And it's only really gonna work if you have the most gorgeous natural bijou eye shape ever to start with. I have quite deep set eyes, as you can see if I look straight ahead. My eyelids almost entirely disappear. So the way that I do my eyeliner, now I've mentioned this before in practically all of my recent TikTok reaction videos. I'm gonna show you. Let me get my bits and bobs. I'm gonna show you. Get yourself your loose powder. This is the Laura Mercier translucent and a cosmetic sponge or anything that you can put on your face with a sharp edge. You're gonna dip the sharp edge of your sponge into 
your powder, get it nice and coated. And taking a mirror, you're going to find the very edge of your eye and put a line. That is now your perfect guideline for creating a perfect wing liner. And if you mess it up, you can just brush away and reapply. Once you've done your little liner, simply brush away with a fluffy brush and your guideline is gone. And what this does is it allows you to apply it on both eyes first to make sure that your eyes are going to be 100% symmetric. Because I think with a technique like this, you run the risk of really not getting it equal. Could work before you apply the rest of your base, but if you do your liner on top of your base, it's going to cause chaos. Oh, is that the CEO of Estee Lauder? Hello, baby. Ah, <laughs> oh, have you come to watch some TikTok with me? Have you? Yeah, what do you have to say? You're very vocal on the mic today, my love, aren't you? Oh, thank you, yes. Are you a good boy? You look suddenly very panicked and alarmed. Should we put some eyeliner on you? Mm, do you want some beautiful eyeliner? I look quite pretty. You, I don't know what it is. As soon as I pick you up, you're like, yawn, yawn, I'm very tired and or stressed. Mummy, lavish me with attention, but also leave me alone. I'm going home. All right, let's get back to the show. Right, what's this? A foundation hack. Oh, I love this. Anything to do with a foundation hack? Love it, love it, love it. Right, let's continue. I'm going to show you guys how to get a flawless she, base oh, using a, a beauty woman. blender. Loads yeah. of people will tell flawless you you need to damp it, you need to soak it, you need to get it really wet. I personally don't like doing that. I use a completely different product. So before I do anything, I prep my skin with all my skincare. I then put on the e.l.f. Poreless Primer and the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Setting Spray. I put that all over my face. I'm then going to take my beauty blender and on the flat side, I spray the setting spray. Like so, just a couple of spritz, not so it's soaking. I'm then going to take the foundation on the back of my hand, press my beauty blender in it and press it directly on the face. So that's quick motions just all over the face very lightly. You can see already comparing the two sides, this has a gorgeous glow and it's melting into my skin. You can't see texture and it doesn't look cakey. Then use the same technique to press in my concealer. So I, I take the corner end of the beauty blender and I just press it all over the eye area where I put my concealer. And you can see the base is glowing and there is minimal texture. But on my YouTube Sparkle with Sophie for loads more. Well, all right, okay, all right. I am going to say a something gorgeous there. Glow and it's I melting. can see texture, like it's not going to disguise texture, but that's fine. Skin has texture. I know mine certainly does. The issue with using setting spray in an environment like this is if you don't work quick enough with your sponge being wet, eventually that setting spray is going to start to dry. And a bit like, you know, when you have like hairspray on your hands, and you start to feel a bit sticky and tacky, you're gonna start pulling off your foundation as you're trying to put it on. So it might not necessarily be the best thing ever. Instead, what might actually work better is to apply a slight layer of setting spray between each of your main base steps. Again, it is a little bit use at your risk. I know that this is a technique that they use on stage to prevent sweating or prevent makeup running if they're under hot lights. But I am gonna say using a dry beauty blender is a great way to create high coverage foundation. You're gonna use a little bit more product because your sponge will absorb it. But if you use a wet beauty sponge, you can only ever really get to a maximum medium buildable coverage. If you're going in with a dry beauty blender, you can get maximum coverage. However, if you do find that you are wasting just far too much product doing it this way, you can apply your foundation all over the skin with a brush and then go over with a dry beauty blender just to buff out any brush strokes that may be in your foundation. Beautiful, stunning every time. Also, skin prep is so important. You should be applying your foundation into like a plump, juicy skin. Definitely not soaking wet. Also, I think the word glow has been um, taken a bit out of context, shall we say, recently. I feel a lot of, like, glass skin, natural glow kind of campaigns are actually almost looking a bit on the oily side and not in, like, a glow from within. A glow to me is like a satin finish. It's like an iridescence, a life to the skin. It's not oil slick. Just gonna leave that there. Cancelled! All right, what's the next one? Oh. There's a fly in my studio. Get off. Go. Go. Oh, the British summer. Accosted. Bitch, <laughs> why are you mad? Because my pussy pops severely and yours don't. Right, the top three micro-beauty habits. Oh. 
do we need a new word? Do we need a new trend to be like panicked about? Do we need this? Okay, right. Instead of poo-pooing immediately on it, let me listen. What are the top three micro beauty habits? Kind of woman who appears to be classy, always put together, but somehow makes it look effortless. Yes. She uses micro beauty habits. Does she? Our Slavic grandmother was always the staple for all of these things. And my right. love, if there's any other habits that any of you have picked up, please leave them below. What's the difference Help between a, a beauty out. habit my and a three top ones. Habit. Number one, for any sort of stubborn blackheads or skin texture, using a soap with sulfur and salicylic acid will change your life. I have yes. a bar soap linked in my Amazon favorites, I believe, that has both of these oh, ingredients in it. And what it does is She's a doing an advert. Oh, I see. Yes, salicylic acid, as I mentioned earlier, will improve skin texture over time, especially if it's like a part of your skincare routine. Don't use it every single day if you are sensitive to it. You will know immediately if you are. I would not call this a micro beauty habit though. This is just using a sensible cleanser. It's a beauty habit, not a micro beauty habit. So, yes, what's the next micro beauty uh, skincare routine influence from Slavic Grandma B? For we'll like scoop out and massage out all of the kind of gunk in your pores, it works incredibly. Salicylic acid is just such an amazing cleansing ingredient, yes. especially for those of us with acne. Yes. Number two, if you cannot afford lip blushing, or if you're just like me and you're really, really scared of like needles or anything coming around your skin, I've also heard it's pretty you painful. You can't be I guess that depends. scared. I can see at least two mil of lip filler, girly wig. I'm really scared, but it's beauty. Coming around your skin. I've also heard it's pretty painful. I guess it depends on where you go. A lip tint is incredible or even just a skin tint it stays on for hours you can sweat swim with it you can also put it on super fast if you're going for a little sleepover your boyfriends wherever you wake up the next day and you just have that little bit of color on your face that is so how is this a micro beauty habit this is just using a lip stain how is this a habit am i falling prey here to like advertising like new age advertising like oh the top three wigs new new micro wigs Actually, just wear a wig. Why don't you try on that lovely wig? Like, it feels a little bit disingenuous. Like, we're gonna learn something new. It's actually just an advert. What's the phrase the children say? Oh, we're all cooked, girls. I also tend to put it on my cheeks, my nose as well. That let me tell could be a micro beauty habit. The that big... there could be a micro beauty habit. You can say, if you've already got this product, use it in three different places. That's like a micro habit. Cause you could then equate it to like, well, use one product to save yourself money, creating a better habit of spending. Like that's the micro beauty habit, not just buying a lip stain. This keys for looking naturally beautiful is actually having color and flush in your face. I completely agree. Never, 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 please my love, ever reuse a towel that you've already used, either drying off your body after a shower or drying off your face or wiping your hands. Even if your mm. body, your hands, your face are clean, still that towel now has the remnants of bacteria. That bacteria, especially when it's a little bit warm, wet, damp, will grow along with possibly mold, mildew, and then you're gonna use that same towel again. This mm. causes break Outs. This causes rashes, fungal infections. It causes so many skin issues that you don't realize. You think, oh, I'm clean right now, and that towel was clean, so I can use it again. No, don't. Honestly, just buy towels, even like face towels or the big ones in bulk and just constantly have them in your hamper and only have a clean, dry one to use, please. Let me know if you want a part two, but as always, sending my love. No. Um, yes, so I do kind of agree with that. I think there was actually a scientific study done on what, like, what the correct amount of reuses for a towel is. A face towel, once. I believe a body towel is actually three times. So it wasn't actually a study, but it is a piece of advice offered by the American Cleaning Institute, which is an organization that represents the production of household, industrial, and institutional cleaning products. They recommend washing bath towels every three to five uses. And this provides a good balance between actually being a hygienic person and doing your bit to preserve the environment. But you have to use it within like a certain amount of days. You can't be like, well, I used it once and now it's on the floor rotting and I'll use it again in three months for the second time. You can't do any of all that. Buying face cloths in bulk is a really, really good one. I wear a lot of makeup. Obviously I work on camera, I work in studio. This is what I do. This is my life multiple times a week. I recently won an auction on eBay where a hotel had ordered too many face cloths and it was like overstock. They, they'd overstocked. They'd overbought, overstocked. I don't know exactly what the word was. And I paid 36 pounds for 
150 face cloths, just hotel standard face cloths, and I keep them in rotation. And I do agree that washing your face cloths, reusing them, but only one time, has the potential to improve your skin quality over time. The same way as like washing your pillows and your pillowcases. I know, awful, isn't it? I know, it's just a never ending laundry list forever until we die. I hate you. But remember to wash your pillowcases. That I would say is a habit. I'm not gonna say that buying bulk face cloths is in somehow a micro beauty habit. I feel like that is a very privileged position. If you're in a privileged position in life where you can think, do you know what? I'm gonna buy 150 face cloths and I'm gonna keep them, you know, in bulk, like washing in, washing out. That is a privileged position. If that's the only problem you have. Come on, Sharon. Why don't you share us your micro beauty habit that you've got in the comments below. Don't bother. Oh, what's this? Okay, a new hack and this woman is absolutely flabbergasted at this hack. So let's watch, shall we? What's she called? Gina Margarita? Oh my God. Oh. You're in for a treat. Um, are eye we? Eye brightener, eye opener, whatever you want eye to call it. yes. We usually in use it optimal. only on the wet line to make like a bigger oh, eye, ho, 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 ho. right? So, so I'm going to make a liner. A right. Just using my finger. And very often we use a concealer to get that snatched feel, but wait for it. <sighs> uh, voila, little corrector. Okay, yeah, I'll give her that. I was a little bit like, is this a hacker or are we just putting on eyeliner? But, oh, that's very unflattering, isn't it? Let's but move wait. it along. <sighs> There we go. Okay, so we can kind of see here. This is exactly what I've done today, but I do it with a glitter liner because as I said earlier, showgirl with a day job. It's the exact same concept. If you do liner and you want to be able to correct it or just provide that little bit of extra lift at the edge of your eyes, actually going in with something slightly lighter underneath is key for achieving that look. You can use the same concealer that you use underneath the eye. You can use a lighter eyeliner. You can use a glitter liner. You can use your foundation. You can even use your powder. But I love this hack and whenever I used to do it on counter and be like, do you know what? Are you tired of having wonky liner, girl? Well, here you go. Whoosh. Everyone would always be like, oh, I need to buy at least seven products from you. And then my KPIs would go up. And that was how I became a great saleswoman. All thank you to the makeup hack at the edge of the eye. I actually feel like... I actually do cuss a little. That meme is never gonna leave my head, is it? I feel like I learnt this in uh, Kevin O'Quan's book. What was it called? Painting Faces? Face, face paint? Book? Facebook? Book face. This one. Thank you very much. That's much better. I'm sure I learned it in there. It's currently in storage because I am in the middle of moving. Uh, but thank you. Yes, a good makeup hack. Oh, I love a good one, girly wig. Good luck with your go. The Rock's new makeup artists. Okay. Handsome. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean handsome? Handsome. I'm a girl. Uh, what do you mean I'm a girl? No, I'm a boy. You're a girl. Uh, <laughs> Controversial. Well, that was quite the non-binary fuss. I'm a boy. You're a girl. I'm a girl. You're a girl now. All right. A beautiful a woman. Now. Look at this beautiful what? woman. And that, I... my loves, is how easy transition is. <laughs> I wish. You want to be a woman? Well, you better get your pink face paint on. They say this pussy's squeaky. What a beautiful, oh muscular woman. Daddy, oh, yes. Very makeup. feminine. No, I don't need more makeup. Yes, I do. think I'm good. You're not good. I really no woman has ever said like that. Daddy, what? I don't need blender. Jesus, what was happening at the end there? It was a portal to eternal suffering. Well, that was something, wasn't it? No. Yeah. Anyway, perfect base until. You have beautiful eyes. Oh, 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 the girly wigs, the struggle is real. I do feel like her base could be matched perhaps slightly better there, but oh, is this the pain, my loves? Is this the pain? I am a glasses wearer. I have a very mild, um, What's the word? Like mild need for glasses? Mild prescription, that's the word. I do, however, have astigmatism and one of my eyes is long-sighted and one of them is short-sighted, so that's fun. If you want a way to get rid of these two little, like, lines that appear here for when you do wear glasses, 
there's only really two things you can do and I know it's gonna sound really like poopy poopy bum bums. Feces! One is blending your foundation all the way up and avoiding this area and maybe just putting a little tiny little bit on your nose just to help create that harmonious blend but then where your glasses actually sit you don't have any makeup so you won't end up with any like indentation or removal of foundation. Unfortunately the only other option you really have which is not ideal and it will still cause problems later down the line is to overload this area with with setting powder, a loose powder if you like, and to also apply that on the part of your glasses that touches your skin. So you've almost got like a, a barrier between your glasses and your skin of excess powder. And then you can just brush off around the outside of where that is. It's still going to end up looking like this eventually, but you're gonna get a little bit more wear out of it. So maybe it's like ideal if you've only got a short thing that you need to do, but you need to be full glam for. In the workplace, girl, with your business wig. I am Gigi de la Roca, business wig. If you still struggle with this and my two little techniques haven't worked for you, you can go back and watch like COVID mask makeup tutorials because there were lots of people that were testing individual products and techniques that would stop imprinting of makeup off of the nose onto the mask. It's the same concept. It's something touching and rubbing that's going to be there like all day. The way that I avoided it was to stop wearing concealer and foundation on my nose and I would just try and blend in my natural skin tone with my like foundation tone with just powder so that it's just powdered so there's none of this like congealing of liquid makeup very unfortunate and i know that the girlies out there i know you struggle with it because i also struggle with it will there ever be an answer except maybe just photoshopped skin <laughs> oh a soiled wig oh another short wig and lots of short ones today girly wigs i would rather go bare face to my wedding than go like this okay right are you ready to be clocked at the pageant everyone Oh. oh, yeah. Oh. oh, wow. Okay, that was really short, but I completely agree. This, the texture that I'm seeing of some makeup artists and their applique masterclass is rather um, not bijou filigree, shall we say. There is just too much product involved here. And also sometimes it can be the like caliber of product used as well. Unfortunately, when it comes to liquid matte lipsticks in particular, the butthole lip, the butthole lip phenomenon. Oh, it's very difficult to avoid. I mean, I think even I probably have some right now. Oh, a little tiny bit, but nothing too bad. Actually, the micro beauty habits from a couple of TikToks before, the lip stain idea is a better idea to wear for something like this. I feel like matte lipsticks look wonderful for a little photo shoot, short wear, or for maybe like an evening event, something that's not gonna be bright daylight, always watch, loads of photography, and it's gonna take hours and hours and hours to do. You wanna think long wear staining for that kind of an idea. If you're interested in the kind of lipsticks that I wear now, I actually wear the Cream Lip Stains by Sephora, I believe they're called. They've got terrible packaging and their names and numbers are awful and they all lean slightly pink, but they are really lovely on the skin. I just wish they had a lot more like brown and beige options rather than like soft pink because I don't always just want cold lips. And I have topped it off today with a little bit of Max Creme de Nude in the middle. Not too much though because it is a cream sheen and it will remove the rest of it. But I agree there is something I quite often see about makeup like this where it is just too heavily applied. Not enough care and attention has been paid by the makeup artists to really work the products into the skin and make sure the blend is seamless. I feel like this is the difference between beauty gurus and makeup artists. Beauty gurus do makeup to overload the skin to look great for a short time, whereas makeup artists should know, should know, how to get the best out of your skin for a long lasting event. And quite often that comes with using different, more elevated products, although not all the time, I must say. I picked up a new concealer recently, the Dior Skin Corrector Forever. It hates! hates Estee Lauder double wear. I had to reapply my face twice today because I just could not get it to work in a decent way. And I was like, do you know what? If someone had just bought these two items together and spent as much money as I have and didn't know what was doing or what was going wrong, they would think that these products are terrible. I actually just think that they don't mix together. And I think it's because one is 
hydration based, which probably has a hidden oil somewhere in there. And the other one is like long wear silicone based. I have a feeling that's the problem that I'm encountering, but I will have to retry with different products to see in the future. But don't overload the skin. Doesn't look good. Stop look it. Good. Right, what do we have here? I hate foundation. No matter if I powder and prime and get an expensive one or a nice one, I'm a BB clean girly only. Okay, right, let's watch. This is where foundation, they said. Mmm. Ooh! Mmm. What happened here? Is that for my drink? I guess it just disappeared that. Ooh, this is... I can also tell it's shot on an iPhone because an iPhone That's is so unforgiving my with drink? texture. Let I me... guess it just... Let's... There we go. Okay, so we can really see what's going on here. This is a case of extreme foundation breakdown. And actually, kind of going from what I was just saying, I have a feeling that it's perhaps the combination of primer, skincare, and foundation not working at all here. Because this kind of texture is exactly what I was talking about, where I just got it from the Dior Skin Corrector Skin Forever Concealer over the top of my Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. This is the texture that it gave me. I never, never, never get this level of texture or breakdown in my foundational makeup looks because I basically curated my skills over many, many, many years to understand what the problem is when this happens. I actually think what's happening here is a mixture of bases that are just not going together. Oil and water do not mix. Oil and silicone sometimes mix, mostly they don't. Oil-based moisturizer and oil-based foundation also kind of create problems because they just get a bit gloopy, gloopy, poopy, gloopy poop. Beautiful. Just remember, always use like with like, except perhaps with oil. Water-based foundation, water-based primer, water-based moisturizer. Oil-free moisturizer, oil-free primer, oil-free foundation. And to be honest with oil-based foundations, Good luck. <laughs> so I don't know if I've mentioned this many, many, many times, which I have. I used to work for Mac and we had a product launch when I was working there. It was the, oh, what's this called? It was like a stick foundation, Studio Fix stick, I'm gonna call it. It's not what it was called, Studio Radiance or something like this. And we also had an essential oils based primer and these two products did not mix. They hated each other. So you could not prime with the essential oils and then put this foundation stick over the top. It just would not set, it wouldn't settle into the skin nicely. It would kind of like, just look cakey and a bit mucky and awful. One of the first things I say for people wanting to get into makeup and make their makeup look long lasting and flattering for hours, always make sure that none of the bases of your makeup are interacting negatively. Doesn't always happen, but when it does, it is heartbreaking and so annoying because these products are expensive and not everyone's gonna tell you what the issue is. They're just gonna try and get you to buy more products. Right, my lovelies, so we're on the last one here, and this came across my feed on Instagram just this morning, and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna save this to watch it later. So this is Ludi Gugu, AKA Lady Gaga, of House Labs, you know, the makeup brand that's taken the world by storm. And for some reason, Lady Gaga also doesn't seem to work with the best makeup artists in the world. But for some reason, I don't know why, I don't know why, I don't know why, it's none of, none of our business, I'm little. You have to watch this, you simply must. And today I'm gonna to be showing you our Tri Clone Skin Tech right, Concealer. Right, so this concealer is I'm like so taking the world by storm. I use it. Today I'm using 11 Fair Neutral, and I yeah, start in the corner of my eye, and I actually just drag it along there. Mm, you that's see how it leaves far a nice, too heavy. creamy Far finish. too heavy. I do one on each side the volume down a bit. to just brighten up the eyes. Then, to brighten up the center of the face, I go in threes around the top of the head, the nose, and under the I want to immediately say and point out what's wrong here, is that it doesn't look like there's any skin prep currently going on. If you look at her eyelids and you look between her eyebrows and across her like highlight points, there's a little bit of like a glow, but it doesn't look like the skin has been refreshed or hydrated recently. So that's the first step, which means we're gonna see a lot of texture with the concealer. Any concealer in the world is gonna do this. We're gonna see a lot of texture. It's gonna settle into the fine lines. She's also waiting a long time between applying her first area of concealer and her last area of concealer. And remember, the edges of your concealer will dry faster than the thicker areas. So anywhere that you've just put an extra bit towards the end should be done literally just as you're blending. I love right, this so. concealer because it has fermented arnica in it as well as shunko oils and other skincare ingredients that calm down inflammation in the skin. So while I am spot concealing, okay. I will also be You shouldn't treating spot the skin conceal with the, the same color that you're highlighting color. with. Now as my Is final step. Is that the same step, color? That doesn't look the same color, does it? Redness, we want to lift the skin. 
So I take the doe foot, dragging up in the areas that I want to lift. This is a lot of concealer. Line above the cheeks and a little on the forehead. Now I'm going to show you using our House Labs concealer brush and start just the brush dragging is dirty. it out. What's nice about CEO this concealer using a dirty is brush. in just Never. two weeks, using a biotech caffeine, it de-puffs under the eyes. At the very end, I take my fingers and I rub it into the skin and it just melts. Giving you a beautiful, no. radiant finish. No. Okay. All done. No, no. Okay, right, let's pause. Look at this area here of unblended concealer. This texture here, texture here, additional texture here and across here where the highlighting is on her already augmented jawbone. Unnecessary. Look at the uneven blending on the nose. I don't think she's even blended here. Up here, there's still a, co a concealer spot, just not blended. And she has some redness popping through that she said she was going to cover and get rid of. This is the problem I have with Lady Gaga and her like team of creatives around her. I don't know why someone who is so iconic, so influential in the beauty sphere, the music sphere, film sphere, your local drag queen in your local bar will create more impressive results with lesser products than this. And I don't understand why I'm constantly seeing this with Lady Gaga in particular. It's like everyone around her just wants to make her look awful all the time. And I do not understand. It drives me wild, girly wig. And in fact, for some reason on this link that I've clicked, it's got no comments yet, but it doesn't. On my phone, it shows up all the comments and they're all like, oh, you look great, what well, lovely, oh, it's wonderful. Oh, it's so good, love the concealer. And I'm like, are we looking at the same thing here? Are we looking at the same thing? I have watched other beauty people use the products that she has created phenomenally. For example, Robert Welsh absolutely swears by the Triclone Foundation, like it's the best thing ever. I've not actually used it yet. I've not used the concealer either. It really jars me because I'm like, Lady Gaga, let me do your face. You will look insane in the best possible way. Well, my lovelies, that's enough of all that nonsense. What was your favorite moment we saw in today's episode of unhinged TikTok nonsense? Not gonna lie, I think mine is actually like not going out clubbing and going to bed. Isn't that great? Oh, I love beds. Let me know in the comments box below which one was your favorite and which one was your most unhinged in your opinion. And with that, my lovelies, it's time for the Patreons. You can see yourself scrolling past on the screen right here. Yes, you can. Today's Luxaria Lab subscriber shout out goes to Velvet Steel. Thank you so much for following me on my second channel here on YouTube, Luxaria Labs. To be in with the chance of being featured in my next videos Luxaria Lab subscriber shout out. Make sure you subscribe to my second channel. The link is in the pinned comment below. And that is my tech, travel and photography channel. Mm, yes. And once again, I want to say a massive thank you to my top tier Patreons. Orcos Samoji, Amelia Dillingham, Ari Ardia X, Ask Guardians, Becky Johnson, Beeble32, Bumblebee Whisperer, Cameron Pittman, Shell Herman, ContraPoints, Finch Dunham, James A. Zengirl, Jenny Jenny, Jenny Wood, Larissa Says Relax, Leanne Jones, Lenore, Les Banana, Marzipan, Mo Sherman, Miss Kiss, Novembrix, Paula Rivera, Sky Dorim, Stefutech, TNS Mum, and Taylor Martin. And you know what my loves i think i'm gonna leave it on the notes of let's all go to bed let's all go to bed don't invite me out because i just want to go to bed beautiful